It's been a week of a lot of stitching with a lot of thread and weaving with a lot of yarn. By the way, all the links to things I talk about are in the description below. All right, let's see what I've been up to. And I bought the roll that was perfect for doing table runners and pot holders and other small projects. And of course it's too small for one piece to work on this quilt, but that's okay. Let me show you what I did. It's hard to see on the front side. So let me flip it to the back here. I already began stitching doing the spiral circles. I'm starting with a large one. This will be the medium one. There'll be a small one that goes here. And what I did was I took a length of the batting and it's probably about this wide. And I cut a curve along the inner edge. I then cut another piece and I cut a, another curve but not one that matched the original curve. I wanted them to overlap. So I am stitching where they meet on both, both edges. And then I had the bits left over that I had cut off. And so I am stitching those down as well, which will just give some extra into some of the parts. So once I get this stitched and the smaller spiral stitched in and then this piece down as well, then I'm going to go ahead and put the backing on and then finish all the stitching. Now I am stitching with three strands of embroidery floss and I am using the Baldani. It is hand dyed, color fast, and it is a dream to work with. I love it. So this was the Vintage Hughes Sampler. And I believe each of these is, I think 25 yards, each little ball. So I am using colorway P2, which I can't remember what the name of that colorway is exactly, but um, it's lovely. It goes very well with this. Part of the charm of slow stitching is that it has a bit of a rustic feel to it. So perfection doesn't even come into play. So I spent the afternoon listening to Garden Girl Studios Sunday Stitching Hangout over on YouTube, where she is making the coolest temperature project. So my goal is to kind of start, like kind of just to progress my way down the design. So I'm gonna start right at the top here. And we are just going to fill in some scattered ashes. Some simple stitches. You can download the template and the temperature color key right from Lauren's website. GardenGirlStudio.com How beautiful is that? It's such a cool idea. It's definitely one of the best temperature projects I have ever come across. I'm not much of a stripe girl, so as intrigued as I have been by the knitted and crocheted and even quilted blankets, this, this is very cool because you'll have all these little stitches in a variety of colors for the confetti part, and then those same colors will be used for this beautiful floral, which you can be stitching along throughout the year. Love it. Because you know, I need another project. Let's check out the progress on my quilt. But stitching wasn't the only thing I had going on this week. I also was working on my mug rug tutorial. I taught a workshop on Thursday evening and I wanted to make sure that I had a full tutorial available in case we didn't manage to get through the entire thing in a limited amount of time. 
So I spent much of a day filming this tutorial and then another day doing all the edits. You can find the link to the full tutorial in the description. All right, we only have one more row of our, to in order to complete one full repeat. And that is row four, which is going to start out with under three. And then it will continue all the way across, keeping with the pattern, nothing unusual at the end, other than there's only one thread left to go over. Under three, over two, under two, over two, under two. And since we were under on our last one, we just need to go over this one. And that is in following with the stitch pattern. All right, we're really starting to see that nice twill. And it's just going to continue to repeat over and over again until you have about three inches. And there you have it, your very own mug rug. So that has been most of my week. And I have something really exciting that I want to start. And no, it's not Lauren's temperature hand embroidery, although I do want to do that. No, this is a project that I plan to film for you all. And it does involve some quilting, which means I really need to get my quilting room together. Well, my fiber craft room, because it also will be housing all of my yarn. Okay, not all of my yarn. It will be housing the open skeins of yarn. Anyhow, I need to get that all cleared out so that I can once and for all move my cutting table into that room and film everything in one easy place with a lovely background of beautifully organized fabric. So, Stay tuned for my progress on that, and hopefully, very shortly, I'll start filming that series. I'll check in again with you all next week, and in the meantime, look out for some more tutorials and other fun videos. Bye.